So now that we see where to start, we're gonna we're gonna start here, you know. And uh, you know, I like this. I really like this picture because of this this road here in our actuality, you know. Because you know, Darik in the Hebrew speaks to speaks to the way. It speaks to a road, and and even the way of Elohim is likened unto a road. And so you know. Truly, this is where we should start. The road of Elohim that leadeth to eternal life. Amen. 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 All right, so we're just going to jump right into Nehemiah. We're in chapter 9. We're going to jump right in. I want first read to read Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 4, please. Now, in the 20 and 4th day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloths and earth upon them. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers, and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of Yahuwah their Elohim one fourth part of the day, and another fourth part they confessed and worshipped Yahuwah their Elohim. Then stood up upon the stairs of the Levites, Jeshua and Bani, Kadmiel, Shabaniah, Buni, Sherebiah, Bani, and Kenani, and cried with a loud voice unto Yahuwah their Elohim. Okay. Now, last week in chapter 8, you know, it was the beginning of the seventh new moon. You know, and, and they were there during the day of Yom Teru, and they had gathered and everything, and, and they, were, they were reading the word of Elohim and their hearts became convict, convicted, right? Mm -hmm. Their hearts became convicted and, and uh, you know, they began to mourn and, and, and cry. And, and the, the people told them, the Levites and, and the priests told them, you know, no, 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 don't, don't mourn right now. You know, this is, you know, this is the, the anointed time of, of Yah. This is the appointed time, rather, of, of Yah. You know, um, this is a time for rejoicing. This is a time when we should rejoice because Yah is with us, you know, and so they did. They so they 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 stopped stopped their mourning. But we can see this is shortly after the festivals. This is shortly after uh, Shavuot, which would have ended like on the twenty second. And here it is. You know, it's the twenty fourth day, and twenty fourth speaks to the priesthood. You know, and it's the twenty fourth day of of that new moon, and the children of Israel were assembled with fasting. So. They did go right back to mourning that even after after the feast times, you know, after the feast were over with, you know, their hearts were still troubled because they the word of Elohim still was in their hearts and it still had taken root and they realized why they were in the situation and circumstances that they were in, that they were now trying to come out of. They're realizing why they were there in the first place and, and, and that it was all prophesied and Yah just kept his word. He just did what he said he was gonna do. You know, and uh, oftentimes, you know, we can look in our own lives and see the same thing. Mm -hmm. We can see, you know, that, you know, our situation and circumstance is just a simple result of Yah doing what he said he was going to do. Yeah. You know, so here it is, you know, at, even after the feast, you know, and this is how, you, how, how sincere it was, you know, after the feast, they went right back to, to uh, mourning. And we see here that they even called together. Um, got together and they began, they were fasting and they had the sackcloth and earth upon them, you know, showing that they was in mourning. And it says the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. You know, so here it is, they, you know, this is a picture of them separating themselves from all strangers, from those who do not, you know, want um, spiritually speaking, this speaks to us separating ourselves from those who do not want to adhere to the word of Elohim, those who, who do not accept him as their head, as their Adonai, as, as their Elohim. Amen? And it says, and they stood and confessed their sins and, their, and the iniquities of their fathers, you know, and they stood up in their place and read the book of Torah of Yahuwah for a fourth part of the day. And another fourth part of the day, 
confessed and worship Yahuwah. So half of the day, you know, they were they were there listening to the word of Elohim and rejoicing and praising Yahuwah, you know, just for being Yahuwah. You know, and then it says in verse four, it says, Then stood up upon the stairs the Levites, Yeshua and Bani, uh Katniel, and so on and so forth. You know, but something I was going over this, and it, and it was just like, it's just, you know, none of these names are making sense, and it's just so perplexing to me seeing that, you know, y'all have been having me look up all these names. You know, and one of the things I, I came across uh, that that does play a part as to why, you know, it may not have been making, uh, some of them may not have been making sense, and that's this Bani, or Buni, or Bani, like we see it three times here. You know, it wasn't three cats by the name of Bonnie, you know. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm, that's what I was thinking at first, you know, but then I began to look closer and I began to to uh, see, I looked in the Hebrew and I, and I see, you know, Bonnie and it just, it just struck me. Bonnie actually in the Hebrew actually means, you know, um, sons of. You know, this is the same word that's translated sons of, you know, when you look at it in the, in the Hebrew. Now, you know, they, uh, you know, someone took the liberty to go through and put all these vowel points and everything in there, you know, and so they distinguish some words differently. But essentially, um, and within the original text, there, there is no, no vowel points. And all of these are the exact same word. You know, it's the bet, the noon, and the yo, bani, the very same thing, word that's translated son of, you know, umpteen thousand times, you know. Um, now, can it be a name? Yeah, you know, but is it a name in, in all cases? No. As a matter of fact, most of the cases it isn't, you know, uh, and here it is, you know, so I, I just, you know, I just uh, went with the sons of, and, and one of the meanings, even if it was a name, would be pos posterity, which actually speaks to, you know, the sons of someone. You know, uh, so I took a look in, and I was like, okay, let me insert that, you know, and see see how it reads. And, and it speaks of them standing upon the stairs or that platform, remember they made in chapter 8. And the Levites, which means joined to. So you have a picture of those who are joined to Yeshua. You know, the sons of Katniel, the sons of the presence of Elohim, grown or increased of Yah, the posterity or sons of those who are scorched of Yah. Who, who are the ones that Yah scorches? Even those that, that he's tried in the fire. Yeah. Those who've come, come out shining like gold. You know, those are the ones that's been scorched. You know, when you find gold in its natural state, it's not all pretty and shiny like, you know, like we, we're used to seeing it. You know, when you find silver in its, in its natural state, it's not, it's not all pretty and shiny. You know, but once it goes through the gold, I mean, I'm sorry, once it goes through the fire, then it shines like the gold we know. You know, same thing with, um, with the other precious metals. Uh, and so, here it is. The scorched of Yah, the sons of Kanani, or those whom Yah has planted or established. You know, so that, that kind of makes a lot more, it, it kind of, you know, speaks and saying something to us. You know, it's speaking of, you know, these ones that were elevated, these ones that were over the people, these were the ones that was joined to Yeshua. They, it was the posterity of the, uh, of the presence of Elohim in which Yah has grown or increased, the posterity of those who were scorched of Yah, that is, those who was proven of Yah, you know, the posterity of those whom he had planted. You know, he had planted a seed way back when, you know, Yahshua said he was divine and, and that uh, the ecclesia were the branches, I mean, you know, well, you know, if they went on to bear fruit, then they should have some posterity somewhere, right? Yeah. You know, uh, and so spiritually speaking, this is speaking to those people, even ourselves, you know, and here it is, they, they stood up and they began to speak to people. Our next reader, Nehemiah 9, 5 through 9, please. Oh. 
Then the Levites, Joshua and... You want me to take this one and you take the next one? Please. <laughs> then, then the Levites, Yeshua and Kamiel, Bani, Hashabaniah, Sherebiah, Hodiah, uh, Shebaniah, Pethahiah, said, Stand up and bless Yahuwah your Elohim forever and ever, and blessed be thy glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. You know, so here it is. Again, we see we see these names that are put in place and speaks to you, uh, those who are joined to Yeshua that has the presence of Elohim, the sons of the interpenetration of Yah. That's what Hashabaniah means. You know, and, and I, I meditated on that and, and uh, someone brought up the, the subject of baptism, you know, earlier. And this is a beautiful picture of uh, someone who is truly baptized in the word. You know, they're, they're take, there's an interpenetration that takes place. That is a mixing or a merging of, of the two substances, you know, to make a third substance. You know, you go in as, as the previous you, you know, you're, you're, you're baptized into the Ruach HaKodesh or the presence of Elohim, and you come out a new creature. Yeah. You know, something different. You'll never be... You'll never be Yahushua, whom you were baptized into, but you, you shouldn't be, you know, who you were when you first went in either. That's right. You know, there should be an interpenetration of Yah within your life, you know, forever changing you. You know, so you should become that new, new creature, and I just see that all up in Hashabaniah. And then, you know, uh, these are the very ones who become scorched of Yah. They're, they're, they're tried in the fire, as all of us will be. And, but they come out. You know, there's something that comes out of the fire. You know, if you're tried in the fire and, and you're just made of hay or stubble, there's not going to be nothing coming out the other side of that no. furnace. <laughs> you, know, you know, but these are actually those who are scorched of Yah and came out saying, Yah is my majesty. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. My majesty, my king. They are the Shebaniah, those who are grown of Yah. They are the ones that are as Pethahiah, whom Yah has freed. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, have my next reader read verses 6 through 9. Okay. Thou, even thou, art Yahuwah alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heavens of heavens, the heaven of heavens with all their hosts, the earth and all the things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou pre <clears throat> preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Thou art Yahuwah the Elohim, who didst, didst come, to, didst choose Abram, and broughtest him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees, and gavest him the name of Abraham, and foundest his heart faithful before thee, and madest a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Jebusites, and the Geshites to give it, I say, to his seed, and has performed thy words, for thou art righteous. <clears throat> and did it th see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, and heardest, heardest their cry by the Red Sea? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, now, so here it is, you know, spiritually speaking, what is this, what is this saying? It, you know, it said, you know, first of all, you have those that stood up. Well, they, the, the Levites, um, um, with Yeshua and Kamiel and all them, they're standing up and they tell the people, stand up Amen. and bless Yahuwah, your Elohim, Amen. forever and ever. And blessed be thy glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. Hallelujah. You know, and, and then they go on to exalt our El. Amen. 
They exalt our ill in grand fashion. Thou, even thou, yeah. art Yahuwah alone. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't you know that our L is L alone? Oh, yeah. Thou, he has made the heaven and the heavens of heavens. Oh, yeah. See, the word heaven in the Hebrew is Hashemayim. Yeah. It's actually a plural term. You know, and here it is, you, you see why it's a plural term, because there's more than one heaven. Yeah. You know, it speaks of him making the heaven and the heaven of heavens. Yeah. You know, and actually this is heaven presented three times. You know, say loud. Now, it goes on to say that he made them with all their hosts, the earth, and all the things that are therein. See, they're acknowledging who Yah is. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything that is within them. You know, and it is he, and he alone that preserves them all. And the host of heaven, all the, the, the great angels, you know, that, that even some of the people on the earth choose to worship, they all worship him. They all worship our El. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, they go on the, the, the praise when they say, Thou art Yahuwah Elohim who didn't choose Abraham and brought us him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees and gave him the name of Abraham. Uh, did choose Abram and brought him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees and, and gave him the name of Abraham. Uh, how many of you know that Abraham was a type of Yahshua? He, he, he really was. He was a type of Yahshua. And we can see here, Abram means high father. Okay? And Yahushua is our high father. Mm -hmm. And it speaks of uh, Yah bringing him out of Ur. Ur means flame. And we know that our Messiah did go through some fiery trials, did he not? Yeah. But Yah brought him out. You know, he was tried in the fire and he came out gold. You know, and he says that uh, he was brought out of earth, and, and hence the Messiah was brought forth from the flames of the Chaldees. Chaldees actually means clot breakers. You know, that is those who break the flesh. You know, clot or, or speaks to the clay or earth, you know, which is what we're made of. You know, so it's a picture of the flesh breakers, those who will break the flesh. You know, and truly they did break our Messiah's flesh. And, you know, but he persevered even in spite of, he still stayed true and, and stood on the word of Elohim even unto death. And Yah has given him the name Abraham, the father of many, many nations. You know, and hence he would say, if I be lifted up, I would draw all men unto me. And so he has been lifted up and he has been drawing all men unto him. And he is the fulfillment of Abraham. He is the father of many nations. Amen. You know, and it, it goes on to says, say that Yah did see their, the affliction of their fathers in Mitzrayim. Now, spiritually speaking, this speaks to the affliction of the fathers of Israel. Um, it speaks of in Egypt. Now, spiritually speaking, we know Scripture teaches us that Egypt is spiritually what? Jerusalem. Okay? Um, Egypt, spiritually speaking, is Jerusalem. So it says, Thou and this, and then it see the affliction of our fathers in Mitzrayim, you know, or in Jerusalem. Now, when we think about Yahushua, who he sent through the flame of the clock busters, or the earth bursters, the ones who busted up his, his flesh, we see that he did see. The affliction of, of our forefathers, spiritually speaking, our, our forefathers would be Yahshua and the apostles. And they were afflicted in spiritual Egypt, that is Jerusalem, where they persecuted them, where they, they, they crucified our Messiah and went after his apostles and hunted them down until they were all gone. And heard is their cry by the Red Sea. Now, the Red Sea actually speaks to, spiritually speaking, speaks to the Reed Sea. The Reed, Reed, it was actually the Reed Sea, not the Red Sea, but um, however, the Reed speaks to papyrus. That's what they made papyrus from, and papyrus is what they were, wrote the word on. You know, all your scrolls, the mass majority of them was, was wrote on papyrus. So this is a picture of the word of Elohim. You know, so the Red Sea is simply a picture of the word of Elohim and is speaking of saying that Yah has heard us our cry 
by the Red Sea. How many of you have read the word and was so confused and, and, and you just began to cry out to Yah? You know, and even during the time of, of the Messiah and his apostles, you know, the Messiah, he wasn't confused, but his apostles sure were. You know, they didn't know what to believe. Here it is, they had this guy that was teaching them all this wonderful stuff and doing all these wonderful miracle signs and wonders, and, but at the same time, those who are the authority over them in the world are saying something totally different. You know, and they take and, and crucify, slay, you know, the one that they're following. So they're just like totally confused, you know. They're sure that Elohim is with them, but at the same time, then why did he die? You know, why did they, why, why was he taken? You know, they, they couldn't, you know, at the time they wouldn't have been able to understand and they, they couldn't understand and Yah Yahushua knew that they wouldn't, even though he was telling them all along that it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, but Yah heard us their cry by the Red Sea. He heard us their cry, you know, um, concerning, concerning scripture. And so, the Messiah was resurrected and he began to show them why that had to happen and how it was prophesied in scripture even before he even came to the earth. You know, so, uh, spiritually speaking, that speaks to our forefathers. In, in verse 10 of Nehemiah 9 says, And showed his signs and wonders upon Pharaoh. You know, he heard the cry and he began to show signs and wonders upon Pharaoh. See, because, you know, Pharaoh, you know, during the time of, of uh, when before Israel was brought or from, from Mitzrayim, you know, Pharaoh had become a hard taskmaster, and he had begun to, to really put it on hard and rough upon the children of Israel. Everybody remember that? Okay, now, you know, there's a parallel going there with, uh, with, in, con in conjunction with the Messiah. When, during the time of the Messiah, you know, spiritual Egypt, which would be Jerusalem, and the high priest, which would which represent Pharaoh, began to put on a great, they used to put a great oppression upon the people. You know, and they were oppressing the people really strong. And that's why when you see the Messiah speak to these things, when, the, uh, when we read other accounts of him in scripture, he's speaking about how, you know, they lay heavy burdens upon the people, but they wouldn't lift them up with their own finger. Okay? You know, so they were like, Spiritually speaking, they were like Pharaoh that was oppressing the people of Elohim. They was oppressing Israel. You know, and, it's, and, and Yah said he, he heard them. He heard them. And he showed signs and wonders upon Pharaoh and on all his servants and on all the people of the land. See, now, this very same thing happened during the time of Messiah. It goes on to say, for thou knewest that they dealt proudly against them. And even as Yah knew then, so didst thou get, a, get thee a name as it is this day. Now, in Luke 7, 20 through 23, we read, When the men were come unto him, they said, Yochanan the, um, they said, Yochanan the Baptist have sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or shall we look for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues of, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind, and he gave sight. Then Yahushua answering said unto them, Go your way and tell Yochanan what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor, and to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not offend, be offended in me. Okay, so his answer to Yochanan's question was, Look at the signs. Look at the signs and wonders. See, he was doing, Yahushua was doing signs and wonders even as Moshe was doing signs and wonders in natural Mitzrayim. The Messiah was doing signs and wonders in spiritual Mitzrayim. You know, and just as Moshe would lead the people out of natural Mitzrayim, the Messiah would lead Israel out of spiritual Mitzrayim. Amen? Everybody see this parallel? Yeah. Okay, Matthew Yahoo 
27, 50 through 23 says, Yahushua, when he, be, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. This is a, an account of his crucifixion. And it goes on to saying, Behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city. Where did they go? Into Jerusalem, and appeared unto many. Hallelujah. So, you know, everybody in Jerusalem, everyone in Mitzrayim, seen the dead that had risen. You know, that's an awesome thing. That's an awesome thing. You know, see... You have to see the parallel. The Messiah did not do anything. He was the prophet like unto Moshe. And like unto Moshe, he did everything that Moshe done. See, now when Moshe had come into Mitzrayim and began to show forth miracle signs and wonders, he did so, but all the miracle signs and wonders that Moshe performed were destructive in nature, ending with death. But if you look at the parallel, the Messiah, our El, our King, our Majesty, he also went into spiritual Mitzrayim, into spiritual Mitzrayim, which is Jerusalem, and he did miracle signs and wonders. But all his miracle signs and wonders was healing by nature. And the final sign and wonder not, didn't lead to death, but ended with life. With the dead rising from out the grave. So you see, it's an awesome parallel that our Messiah has set forth that we might understand the plan of Elohim. Amen. See, and we need to get this into ourselves. We need to get this into our spirits that, you know, that Yah has a plan. And that we are an intricate part of that plan if we choose to be. You know, and we can be... Well, we're going to be a part of that plan whether we choose to or not. But if we want to be a part, the good part of the plan, we can choose to be the good part. You know, you're going to be a part whether you know it or not. So I advise you to choose to be the good part, you know. Now, because the same thing is going on, see, but he wouldn't have us be blinded. He wouldn't have us in the dark. We can see what's going on. You know, he's opening our eyes that we might be able to see so we won't be in the dark. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank see, this is why he has, he has our, his word presented before us. This is why he has his word given unto us, yeah. that we might be able to see. Okay, now, so we see these miracle signs and wonders that Moshe done. They were all destructive in nature, and they, they, they destroyed Mitzrayim utterly, you know. But Yahushua, when he came into spiritual Mitzrayim, all his miracle signs and wonders were healing by nature. The blind saw, the lame walked, the deaf heard, and it ended in the deaf, the dead being raised. Versus, you know, how did how did Moshe's last last plague end and all the firstborn being killed? You know, death prevailing over the land. You know, so Yahushua came to undo what Moshe did. You know, where he ended in death, Yahushua ended in life. Hallelujah. And it didn't stop there. It didn't stop there because when you see his ecclesia, you know, in Acts, you know, after after the Ruach HaKadosh fell upon him, you know, we see we see them it, where 3,000 was, was killed, 3,000 was saved. They received life. I can go on and on, but I'm not. Uh, we're going to go to verse 11, Nehemiah 11. 9-11, and it says, And thou didst divide the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on dry land. And their persecutors thou threwest into the deeps as a stone into the mighty waters. Okay, now, we already spoke about the Red Sea, speaking to the Reed Sea, or the Papyrus Sea, which speaks to the word of Elohim. So here it is, he's saying, Thou didst divide the sea before them. He, 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 and when Yahushua came, Yahushua divided the sea before them. He divided the word of Elohim. Yes, yes, he did. did he not? Yes, he did. Spiritually speaking, that's exactly what he did. He came and he divided the word of Elohim. He said, man hath said, but I say... You know, uh, he said, men have said, but my father, which is in heaven, says, yeah. you know, he says, everything I, I say 
came straight from the Father. Everything I've done comes straight yeah. from the Father. Yeah. You know, he came, he said, you know, I don't come to bring peace, but I've come to bring a sword. Yeah. I come to, the swords divide. He came to divide, and he yeah. divided the sea. He divided the word. What word? The word of man from the word of Elohim. Yeah. Okay? Now, in Ephesians 5, 26, spiritually speaking, we have a, uh, something that bear witness. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So see, here, Scripture is teaching us that waters is representative of the word. Amen. So what he was um, divided, when, he, when Moshe divided the sea, Yahushua divided the word. You know, so when Moshe divided the, the, the papyrus sea, Yahushua divided the word of Elohim. Okay. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6 says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moshe in the cloud and in the sea. See, I want you to understand this, that there is a parallel, and you really need to get this, because even as they all had to go through the cloud and, and through the sea, we all have to go through yeah. the cloud and, and through the sea. You have to get that. Yeah. See, because we have, the only way that we're going to get to Elohim is if we go through that sea. That sea is the word of Elohim. We have to travel through the word of Elohim in order to get to Elohim. That's that road that says start here. You know, you have to travel through the word of Elohim. Yah split the sea and caused them to go through on dry land. Verse 3 of 1 Corinthians 10, it says, And we did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Messiah. But with many of them, Elohim was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Now, get this in your spirit. Get this, with all you're getting, get understanding. These things are as an example, so that we can see what's going to happen. When we read the word, we're actually reading today's and tomorrow's newspaper. Amen. Yeah. We, we're not, we don't have to be in the dark. That's you know, right. Yah has given us what we need to, to know. Amen. It's, it's right before us. All we have to do is, yeah. is believe and walk therein, okay? Yeah. Now it says, with many of them, Elohim was not well pleased. Now, don't you think that everyone that came out of Mizraim, Yah was pleased with, is telling us right here that he wasn't. Right. Right. So, likewise, there's a parallel, right? So, don't think that everyone who called themselves coming out of spiritual Mizraim, that Yah is well pleased with. Hello, somebody. Yeah. It says, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think for a moment that a whole bunch of folk are not going to get overthrown yeah. in the spiritual wilderness? Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is why Apostle Paul is telling us these things are here for our example. Yeah. To the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So, let us take note that, you know, other things that they've done wrong, so we're not destined to repeat it. Because we, we are truly without excuse. That's right. Because we already know what's going to happen. We already yeah. know what Yah is going to do if we, if, if, if we do go astray. We already know. Yeah. They didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't know, but we know. Yeah. You know, so let us take heed. Yeah. Let, us, let us learn from their mistakes. Yeah. You know, so again... Just to reiterate, spiritually speaking, Moshe divided the Red Sea, which speaks to the word, see, the word of Elohim. You know, and so what he did, uh, he divided, he divided that, that, that word of Elohim from the word of Pharaoh. You know, see, see, it was, it was the word of Pharaoh who was ruling over Israel. It was his word versus the say of Yahuwah. Because Moshe was going in, he was saying, thus saith Yahuwah, yeah, right. let my people go. Yeah. And Pharaoh said, I don't know Yahuwah. Yeah. These my people, and they're not going nowhere. Yeah. You know, so somebody had to give. Yeah. There was a standoff, and somebody was going to lose. Yeah, right. Pharaoh lost. Right. I don't know if you read the story, but Pharaoh lost. Yeah. He lost the first time, and he's going to lose the second time. Yeah. You know, actually, he lost the second time because we know when the Messiah came, he lost again. And it's going to come a third time, and he's going to lose the third time. Three times a charm, right? You know, he's going to lose the third time. That's going to be spiritually complete, over with, done, finito. Okay? So this is what's coming down the line. 
so you can see the past, the present, and the future. Yes. Know that the Messiah did. He was the prophet like unto Moshe, and he did what Moshe yes. done. Yes. You know, once you understand that, then you can start looking for the things that Moshe done and looking for the things that Yahushua paralleled. Okay? Yeah. Now, the Yahushua did likewise through the witnesses of his miracle signs and wonders as to dividing the word the word in which we're to follow. You know, yeah. here it is, the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had what was called the seed of Moses. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so they were the authority over Israel during the time of Messiah. They were as Pharaoh. They had become oppressors of the children of Elohim to the point where the children of Elohim was crying out and Yah heard their cries. Amen. Okay? And he sent our Messiah to deliver them. Okay? And he did so. He came in and he divided the word of Elohim from the word of man. That is, those who had the seed of Moshe. See, because I don't know how many... Uh, um, some of you may not be familiar with the fact that, you know, the Pharisees, those, those priests, that priesthood, the ironic priesthood, what they said went. Mm -hmm. If they said, you broke Shabbat, then guess what? You broke, you broke Shabbat. Mm -hmm. And if they said that, that the uh, penalty was death, well, the word said was, the penalty was death, so they had, they had the authority to actually slay you. Yeah. See, this, is a, this was a very big deal. This is why you see, you know, in Galatians, Paul saying, who have bewitched you to bring you back into bondage, to bring you into bondage, you know, after you were set free, after you was free. Yeah. See, because if you, if you went and got circumcised, they could prove that you were one of theirs. Right. And they had authority to actually slay you. Mm -hmm. See, and people don't understand that. That's a very big deal. They could literally take you and slay you. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but Yah, he came to divide the word of Elohim from the word of the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees. That's right. And so he has. You know, so we don't have to listen to what they say no more. Right. All we have to do is listen to what Yah says. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? You know, he came and divided it even as Moshe divided the word of Pharaoh from the word of Elohim. Right. You know, so there, there's the parallel there. You know, uh, now, just to give you an example of how Moshe, how his word was ruled, you know, we're told in Matthew Yahoo 19.8, it says, He saith unto them, Moshe, because of the hardness of your heart suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. You know, it was not the will of Elohim that he allowed them to put away their wives. But it was because of Moshe. Moshe had the authority and he said, I'm going to allow it because of the hardness of their hearts. But it wasn't the will of Elohim. No. See, and that's what we have to understand. It was not the will of Elohim. So therefore, you know, that was Moshe's word. And it stood. You know, even as the Pharisees, they made all kind of rules and regulations that stood and the people had to adhere to. You see? You see how that went? So by the time when, when the Messiah came, these Pharisees had made so many rules and regulations yeah. concerning the things of Yah that it was just unbearable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so just like it was so oppressive, it was likened unto the children of Israel up under the rule and authority of Pharaoh. Yeah. You know, so Yahushua came to set his people free. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, what, that's, that's truly what he did. You know, you read about uh, the seed of Moshe in Matthew Yahoo 23, verse 2, for anyone that's interested. You know, but see, this is what the Messiah came to do. This is, he came to do the same things that Moshe came, went to do. You know, there's a parallel. That's why he's called the prophet likened unto Moshe. Now, the latter part of Nehemiah 9:11 says, so they went through the midst of the sea on dry land. You know, even as with the illustration here, you see the dry land. Now this word, these words on the dry land is actually Yabasha, number 3004, which speaks to dry ground. You know, now, yes, it does literally speak to dry ground, but it comes from a root word 
uh, a primitive root number 3001, which is uh, 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 Basha, I believe. Uh, I, I forgot to put it in there, but I think it's something, uh, Yabash, I think it's Yabash, Yabash, number um, 3001, meaning to be ashamed. So you see, spiritually speaking, what it's saying is that they were ashamed. They were, that is, they were feeling inferior. The definition of ashamed is to feel inferior or inadequate or embarrassed. A feeling of guilt or a conviction of some criminal action or indecorous conduct or by the exposure of some gross errors of, or misconduct which the person is, is conscious uh, must be wrong and which tends to impair his honor or reputation. Now, I want you to think about that definition for a minute, and I want you to take your minds back to the time of Israel, natural Israel, when they were coming out of natural Mitzrayim. Now, you know the story, how they came out, and they were over by the Red Sea, okay? And remember how I said, y'all began to hear their cries as they were um, by the Red Sea. Now, when they were by the Red Sea, they had left out of... Um, out of Mizraim because Pharaoh told them to go because of that last last plague, right? Mm -hmm. Pharaoh told them to go because of that last plague and they had left and you know, they found themselves over up against the Red Sea and lo and behold, you know, the next morning Pharaoh had a change of heart and he was coming with all his chariots. Yeah, right. And they was over there and they, be, they began to become really confounded. They began to really flip out. You know, they began to to, to feel ashamed that they had followed this guy, you know, up out of Mitzrayim that, where they had been for so long, for over 400 years, 430 years to be exact. You know, they had, they began to feel ashamed that they, they, they followed him out because here comes this guy, Pharaoh, who was their, their hard taskmaster for so long, their taskmaster for so long with his army to destroy them. They began to feel inadequate. They was embarrassed because, because they actually followed this guy, and this guy don't have an army, he don't, have a, he don't even have a spear. All he's walking around with is a staff. You know, and they began to feel guilty as if they committed some type of conviction, as if they, uh, convict, as if they committed some type of criminal action, or as if they done something wrong. You know, as if they were exposed to a gross error and they were about to pay the price. This is the way that they were feeling. You know, just think about it. How would you have felt? You know, this is, this is how they were feeling. And they were like, okay, here they come. We don't have no weapons. And we don't have nowhere to go. But yeah. But yeah, see, you know, they was not familiar with Elohim at that time. They were not familiar with Yahuwah Elohim. They were not well familiar with them, should I say. You know, they were getting familiar with him. They seen the signs and the wonders, the plagues that he brought upon Mitzrayim. So they were getting familiar with him, but they, they still wasn't 100% sold out. So they were filled with fear, you know. And many of us find ourselves in the same place. You know, but right when it seemed as if there was no hope left, Yah had Moshe split the Red Sea. You know, now, I want you to think about that because there's a great lesson in that, yeah. you know. There's a great lesson in that. He had them to split the Red Sea because we, too, have to walk upon that dry land. Yahushua has split the word of Elohim. He, has, he had separated the word of Elohim from the word of the Pharisees, you know. But when the people began to try to follow the word of Elohim, the word of the Pharisees, the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees, they came after yeah. those that followed the Messiah to kill them. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. They did the very same thing that Pharaoh had done. Yeah. After they were delivered, they began to come after them to slay them. Yeah. You know, and Yah wasn't having that. No. You know, so... Even as the Red Sea got split, so did the word of Elohim get split. Even as Israel was delivered from Mitzrayim, so was Yahshua's apostles delivered from the Pharisees. 
during that time. You know, until they was able to accomplish their task. Okay? Uh, Matthew Yahoo 3, 1 and 2 says, In those days came Yochanan the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of Elohim is at hand. And Matthew Yahoo 417, from the time, from that time Yahushua began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of Elohim is at hand. See, this is when Yahushua was actually splitting the Red Sea. He was splitting the word of Elohim. He was separating the word of Elohim from the words of the scribes and the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Okay, now this word, repent, you know, which is how it all started, you know, that, that journey started for them back then. What does this word, repent, mean? It means to, to think differently or afterwards. Morally, it speaks to feel compunction. What is compunction? To have a strong uneasiness caused by a sense of guilt. You know, is that, oh, where did it go? Is that... Not like and done to, mm -hmm. feeling inferior, a feeling of guilt or conviction of some criminal action. Mm -hmm. See, this is the very same feeling that we're to have when we begin to walk the way of Elohim. You see the parallel? Yes. It's right there. It's the same thing. This is the Yabashah. Our repentance is the Yabashah. Our repentance is the dry land that we walk upon through the word of Elohim. See, we can only walk through the word of Elohim on dry land. Otherwise, the waters will wash us away. Yeah. Now, the waters have been split, but, you know, what you think would have happened if some of the people decided, well, I'm going to walk through this part. You see what I'm saying? You have to walk through the Yabashah. You have to walk upon the dry land. You know, if any decided to walk through this part or that part, they're going to be destroyed. So we have to walk upon the Yabashah, and the Yabashah speaks to genuine repentance. It speaks to thinking differently. Now, how many of you can see that even though that they were afraid of Pharaoh and his army, once that Red Sea split open and they began to walk through on that dry land, that they began to think differently about Yah? Well, maybe he is able to save us. <laughs> well, maybe he can pull this thing off. You know? How many of you think he be they began to think differently? You know? But at the same time, you know, they still would have been uneasy. Because those chariots were still coming real strong. You know, see, and I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture for you because this is how our walk of faith is. It's a walk in which you're always going to feel uneasy. It's a walk in which you're always going to be feeling guilty for falling short here or falling short there. Yes, yes. You know, or, or, or because, you know, I'm not, I'm not, because I didn't do what I was supposed to do or I didn't try as hard as I could have tried. You know, this is the way you're supposed to feel. This is how we walk. This is how we proceed forward. You know, and as long as we continue to walk on that dry land, as long as we continue to walk with this repentful heart, we'll make it to the other side. Yes. Amen. See, we can't give that up. No. we got to hold on to that repentful heart. Verse 12. Moreover, thou lettest them in the day by a cloudy pillar, and in the night by a pillar of fire, to give them light in the way where they should go. Now, this word cloudy is anon. It's anon, number 6049, meaning to cover. It comes from anon, number 6051, exact same word, meaning a cloud. And the word pillar is amud, number 5982, meaning a column as standing. It comes from amad, number 57. 5675, meaning to stand, to abide, to a point. Okay, so here it is. The book of Nehemiah is pointing out, you know, that Yah led them in the day by a cloudy pillar. 
okay? And we see that a cloud speaks to cover. So it's speaking of a covering. He led them by covering, you know, and a pillar means to stand, a standing covering that abided over them, that was appointed over them, okay? Now, let's see what Scripture says about, spiritually speaking, about what, what a cloud can speak to. In Ezekiel 38, 9, it, it teaches us, Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Oh, so a cloud can speak to people. Okay, Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is before us. When, you, when they was crossing over on that dry land and they was going through that, that, that Red Sea that was split on each side, do you think they were walking or running? <laughs> I think they was going as just as fast as they feet could carry them, you know, <laughs> knowing that those chariots was, was hot on their trail. You know, so here it is. We see that spiritually speaking, the clouds can speak to people, specifically witnesses. Okay, now what about pillars? Galatians 2 9 teaches us, and when Yaakov, Kephas, and Yochanan, who seemed to be pillars, perceived that the grace was given unto me, they gave to me Barnabas the right hand, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Hmm. So the pillars can also speak to people. Okay? And actually speaks to some pretty particular people. Yaakov, Yaakov Kephas, and Yochanan. The very same three that Yahushua was always pulling to the side. Say a lot. First Timothy 3.15 but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest behave thyself in the house of Elohim, which is the ecclesia of the living Elohim, the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay, so scripture teaches us that the pillar speaks to the ecclesia, and it also speaks to particular individuals who are the pillars of the ecclesia. You know, so the, the ecclesia is a pillar in, in and of itself, and there are some that's within the ecclesia that are pillars even within the ecclesia itself. You know, like the pillars of the pillars, if you would. You know, so here it is, we see a spiritual picture that's forming. When it says, moreover, thou lettest them in the day by a cloudy pillar, in other words, he led them by people who were witnesses. Is this not exactly what happened with the apostles? who are witnesses to the Messiah, who are witnesses to his ministry as well as his death and his resurrection, who made up his ecclesia. They understood this. You know, for we see in, in Acts chapter 1, they, they, they knew they had to replace Judas. And who did they choose to replace? They, they, one of the criteria was it had to be someone who was with us from the beginning. Someone who was a witness from the beginning. And we know uh, Matthew Yahoo was the one who ended up getting chosen. But this was because he was there from the beginning. You know? So, we see, spiritually speaking, we see these, these cloud of witnesses that act as pillars. And they, they are there to lead and guide the people. You know, this is just a spiritual picture of Yah's ecclesia. Yeah. That's all it is. You know, and the pillars of the pillars was Yaakov, Kephas, and Yochanan. Mm -hmm. Who we know, you know, um, we have scripture or letters from them even now today. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know, this is awesome. This is an awesome picture and parallel of what Yah done in natural Israel and how he's doing it in spiritual Israel. How he's doing it even now today. Yeah. You know. And so here it is, we're in a spiritual wilderness and we have our pillar by day. Yeah. You know, it goes on to say, and in the night by a pillar of fire to give them light in the way wherein they should go. Now, we already um, spoke to the pillars. What about this fire? Let me have my next reader read 
First Kephas chapter 4, verses 12 through 19, please. But let it think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Messiah's suffering, that when his glory shall be received, ye may also be glad. Wait, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Messiah, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of Elohim resteth upon you. In their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as any, as a busybody in other man's matters. And if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify it what he must, on his behalf. But the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Elohim. And if it first begins at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of Elohim? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let him that suffer according to the will of Elohim commit the keeping of their souls to him, and in well-doing as to unto a faithful creator. All right. So here it is. We see that the fire speaks to the trials in which the saints have to go through. Kiva says, Beloved, think, not a, it a strange, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. You know, Scripture has, had taught us a long time ago that, you know, uh, everyone had to be tried in the fire. You know, now some of them was tried in the fire and some of them didn't come out. Right, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, but spiritually speaking, we can see that Yaakov, Kephas, and Yochanan, who were the pillars of the pillars, they came out. That's right. For we have books by all of them. Yeah. You know, and this is, yeah. this, is, this is that fiery cloud, if you would. This is that... that Fire by night, you know, because this is these are the ones who were persecuted. We know them to be persecuted, even as Apostle Paul was persecuted, and and all the other saints that um, we have works of. We can see that they were persecuted, you know, and yet there were still endure till today, and they're still their words are still here to lead and guide us. Yeah. See, these are those pillars of fire. You know, these are those pillars of fire. These are those pillars that was tested and tried by the fire and came out yes. as gold. Mm -hmm. You know, hence, Kephas will say in verse 16, yet if a man suffer as a Christian. Now, you know, really when you consider this word Christian, this word Christian is, is commonly taught to, be, to, to mean follower of, of Christ. You know, Christ means anointed one. You know, that's the uh, the Greek equivalent of Messiah. You know, so if you're a true Christian, then you're an anointed one. You know, if we're truly anointed, we have to be anointed of someone. You know, and those of us with the Rock HaKodesh are anointed of the most high ever. Okay? You know, so if you're going to suffer as an anointed one, because when you start looking at the anointed ones of Elohim, you start to see that they suffer real big time. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. You know, Hallelujah. none as much as, as much as our Messiah, Yahushua, I mean, you know, who was the anointed one. Now, there, there may be many anointed, you know, but there was, there's only one, the anointed, you know, there, there's, there's one designated as the leader of all the anointing, and that is our Messiah, Yahushua. Yeah. You know, and he suffered more than any of us. Yes. Yes. You know, so, you know, here it is. If anyone suffered as, in, in other words, anyone suffered as the prophets of old, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, suffered as the apostles of old, suffered as the Messiah, mm -hmm. let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify Elohim on his behalf. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's, that's huge. My, 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 yeah. You know, but check out verse 18. I just, you know, I can't, I can't just not, not say nothing about that. It says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved. What? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because you have so many people, you, you know, you have over 2 billion 
self-proclaimed Christians nowadays, and they won't none of them, won't not one of them, well, most of them won't tell you, or most of them will tell you that they're all saved. You know, but that kind of contradicts the word right here. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of Elohim commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. You know, and that's what we need to do. We need to suffer according to the will of Elohim. See, there's a lot of people suffering, but they're not necessarily suffering according to the will of Elohim. They may be suffering for this or that or the other, you know, but not necessarily for the will of Elohim. You know, and, and that's, that's the thing. You know, so, the pillar, just to reiterate, the pillar uh, of the cloud by day, we recognize the pillar of the cloud by day from the, from the works that were done during the day. See, the Messiah, when he walked upon the earth, he was doing the works. And he said, you know, I must do the works while it is yet day. Yeah. For the night cometh when no man can work. See, in the night, no one can do the works. So you won't be able to acknowledge which way to go by the works. See, but during the day, you know which way to go because you can see the works. See, that's why all the apostles, the Messiah during that time, he did the works of Elohim. The apostles did the works of Elohim. You know, but now, you know, night was coming even then. If we go by Yahshua's words, you know, because he said, I must do the works while it's yet day for night cometh. So if it was coming then, surely it has come by now. You know, now, the early believers, they had this cloud of witnesses that was doing the works of Elohim to lead and guide them, to be as a covering for them. Yeah. Even as Yahushua, even as Yahuwah was a covering for Israel mm -hmm. when they came out of Misraim. Now those of us who believe now today, we have a covering. They had a, well those uh, that followed Yahshua and his apostles had a covering that was a cloud of witnesses that was doing the works of the day. Mm -hmm. See, but those of us that are born or are traveling through the night, we don't have that cloud of the day. We don't have all those wonderful works being done now today. So do we do we just not follow the way of Elohim? Do we are we lost in the darkness? No, he has given us a pillar of fire to guide us through the night. And the pillar of fire in which he's given us is the very word of Elohim that the apostles set forth. What we call the brick out of shower, the New Testament, mm -hmm. the New Covenant, the New Covenant writings. You know, this is our pillar of fire by night. Amen. Even though we're at night when no man can work, we still have the word of Elohim to lead and guide us Hallelujah. as to which way we should go. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's no reason for anybody to get lost. If we would just simply follow the pillars that Yah has put before us. That's all I have for you today. I pray it was a blessing unto you. Yeah.